Schwartz is a real globetrotter. While in Israel recently, he was thinking all about the locations here in Utah that are named after places in the Holy Land. So he visited those sites and tells us that a couple of them even look like Utah. Craig Work takes us to the original Moab, the Jordan River, Mount Nebo, and even the Jericho Sand Dunes. It's today's Worth Watching. This is the southern Utah we all know and love. Well, except for some 2,000-year-old Roman ruins, it is actually Israel. And that range lining the Dead Sea in Jordan is Moab. There is no doubt that this is Moab. Now, up on top of that range is Mount Nebo. Well, not exactly the Mount Nebo of Juab and Utah counties, but one of the number of Utah places named after biblical locations. What happened was these steps took you to the top of a flat walkway. There is a scholar who knows them all and their Utah counterparts. The Reverend Canon Mary June Nestler has been an archeologist and teacher throughout the Holy Land for decades. I want you to find the city wall. That's a fourth century wall. She now lives in Jerusalem as the course director of the prestigious St. George's College in Israel. Prior to this work, she lived in Utah for a decade. My goodness, Israel looks so much like parts of Utah. Uh, sometimes I'll look up and wonder where I am. Of course, you will find the 156 mile long River Jordan in the Holy Land, and it is surprisingly about the size of the Jordan River in Salt Lake County. And like the Utah counterpart, people have lived along its banks for thousands of years. And how about the Jericho sand dunes of Utah? Well, this is Jericho, and these are the dunes of the Judea Desert. Now, the dunes aren't quite as sandy as in Utah, more rocky, but you can see that they were well named in Utah. And besides, it is here that you find the original 4x4 of the desert dunes. Um, no, this is not a fun ride. Not at all. There is no good way on or off. Now, Canon Nestler says you'll find hundreds of locations in America named after biblical places. Not just because they look like their counterparts, but because religious people honor those places with the new locations in America. They had no idea in most cases what the actual biblical places looked like, but they were dear to them, dear in their hearts, and when they founded places and they needed to name a river, they needed to name a town, they naturally looked to the scriptures for inspiration. But whether pioneers saw these places or were just inspired by the accounts in the Bible, Utah is pretty close to much of the land. For example, I just thought that this canyon looked like the land outside of Price. Well, it's a lot of fun because when I'm riding around and I see the name of a place that I know from Utah and I know I'm halfway around the world, it jogs my memory of good things. Oh, and of course there is the Dead Sea. Now you can't help but think of the Great Salt Lake, and why isn't our Salt Lake really named after the Dead Sea? Well, actually it does have the same name as the body of water when you look at the literal translation of the name in Hebrew. Yam HaMelach in Hebrew is the Salt Sea. So Utah has a Great Salt Lake, and Israel and Jordan have a Great Salt Lake. But in Hebrew, it has pretty much the same name. Exactly the same name. And there is the same issue when one floats like a cork in this water. You usually do it only once. But again, it's interesting to see Utah is a lot like the Holy Land in topography, well, except for the Roman roads. Well, do you see Utah here? Okay, in your imagination. Craigworth, news for Utah at the Dead Sea. So cool. Craig was in Israel on assignment for the Episcopal Church of Utah. He also told us he now knows there are four ways to fall off a camel. Front, back, right, and left. Oh, Craig Worth, aren't we?